Hey guys, welcome back to Art of Craftsmanship. My name is Dustin and today in the shop I'm going to be working on a coat rack. Now, I've been doing this purge organizational thing with my wife recently and we're working through the month of January. We were in our bedroom recently and I have this cedar chest in my room that has a big open wall space behind it and because it's a flat space in my room I end up just throwing stuff on top of it. I have uh, clothes and jackets and my bag I hang up when I come home from work and I'll throw my jacket on it or I'll have four or five six different jackets. Some jackets I'm wearing on the weekends and some jackets I'm wearing in the shop and some jackets I'm wearing to work. So it ends up just collecting a bunch of stuff. So I thought with this big wall space behind it I could build a coat rack that goes right above that. That way I can come back I have a nice space to hang up all my jackets. I can hang up my bag and leave the cedar chest open because then we keep things inside of it like sheets and blankets and sweaters and things like that. Today I'm going to be making this coat rack out of a piece of salvaged oak that I have. I'm going to go ahead and sand this off and clean it all up and we'll do some type of painted decoration on this. Uh, and then I'm going to forge some hooks out of this which is a, a piece of scrap steel that I picked up. It's an old uh, fireplace set of fireplace tongs but it's just flat mild steel so I'm going to cut this apart and use this to forge out some hooks. So we'll get that all together get them all on here and we'll hang it up upstairs. Now the first thing we need to do for, the, for this project is I need to kind of work out the drawing of dimensions because I need to figure out how many hooks I can have on here, how they would fit in and where I need to put holes so I can mount it to my wall along with my stud. So let's go ahead and get started with the drawing. So my overall design for this is a 38 inch board. So the board's 38 inches. I have five hooks. They start at three inches and then there's eight inches spaced between each hook. The board is five and a half inches tall, so each hook is four inches tall, which leaves three quarter of an inch at the top and three quarter of an inch at the bottom. And the nice thing about using an eight inch space is that it'll be far enough that the coats will hang separately, but also I'll be able to use two of those hooks to be able to put screws behind or use those same screws and run it straight through into the wall into my studge, which is, you know, the center of each stud is 16 on center. Um, the hooks will have at about a half inch, I'll drill out a hole for attaching it to the wood and then it'll roll down, it'll curl around and then back up and I'll put a scroll and the hook will be about two inches tall. So it should be really nice. The scrolls will be nice and even down the middle of the hooks and the nice thing about this is once I get it up onto the wall and I use those screws and those center, the, the screws on center, you won't be able to see screws that are attaching to the wall so it'll be have this kind of a feel that it's floating on the wall which would be kind of nice. So I'm going to break this apart into usable pieces, things that I can fit into the forge. So I'm going to clamp it up in my vise and I'll grind off each of these little rivet heads. I should be able to just pop it apart after that. I'm going to lay up the forge now and I'm going to throw these into it so we can get them straightened out and start them, start curling them into hooks. As I straighten and finish each one, I'm just quenching it because I'm going to cut these off with a grinder. So I'm going to cut them and measure them all. Uh, so as I'm straightening each one, I'll just quench it, put it aside, and we'll get ready to cut them to length and make our hooks.
My hooks are gonna be four inches tall in total, and I want the actual hook with the scroll to come up about two inches in the middle. So with the four inches plus about an inch or so wide plus two inches back up, puts me at about seven inches. Um, that should be a, enough material, and I'm gonna taper the end to draw out to do my scroll work on the end. So I'll probably end up with about eight or nine inches, and I can shape that into my hook. I'm gonna throw all five pieces of steel in the forge at the same time because I'm gonna work on each step together. So I'll draw out a taper on all five of them first, then I'll come back in and I'll do the scroll on all five, and then I'll make all five into a hook. So that way I'm doing each step for all five of them, have a kind of this full process. I have all my tapers done now, and I have the middle of the taper, that quarter inch is straight down the line. I just straighten everything up and eyed it so that way everything's nice and straight. So I'm gonna again let this heat up. I'll do a scroll on all five pieces. So I'm gonna bend over the end and just do a little scroll work. And then I'll take out that first piece again and I'll do the hook. When I, once I get that first hook the way I like it, I'll quench it and then I'll trace it on top of the anvil. So that way for each subsequent one as I pull out, I can bend it and shape it and match to that first one. So I get five matching hooks. All right, so I like the way this looks. I think that's nice. I'm gonna go ahead and quench this one, and I'll use this as a template.
How's that for getting pretty close the first time? I'm gonna drill a hole, just a single hole in each of these uh, hooks now. And I'm just marking off the distance from the sides to the center, as well as from the top. So it's all the same distance. So this hole will be the same distance from the sides and from the top. And that's just purely aesthetics. Just, I wanna make sure they all look the same across the board. switch over to a, uh, a little bit bigger drill bit and use it to be basically a countersink for each hole. I'm gonna cut this to length at 38 inches on the chop saw, and then I'll use my hand sander to just sand off the entire top and get it down to that nice, clean, raw wood again. So I'm all finished. All finished now, and we just I took it to 150 grit, which is perfect, a really nice surface. So we move on to my next step, which is gonna be painting the design on this. I'm gonna start laying out my design. I'm gonna do a horizon line of trees all the way across. And I want a kind of mix of some coniferous, some deciduous, because I'm here on the East Coast and you know that's kind of the trees that we're used to. So I uh, love painting landscapes and being outside. So this is just gonna be a great project. It should look really nice and be a great way to represent kind of this area 
on the design. Now that I have my horizon line drawn out, I'm gonna start mixing up my color. And I want it kind of a, a nice, uh, a rich but dark green, but I'm also gonna water it down so that way when I paint it on here, it's gonna act more like a stain. So you'll see the dark green, but you'll also still be able to see the wood grain through it. So far, I've added just a couple different colors. I added uh, two different greens, a viridian um, and an emerald green, and I have a lemon yellow and a yellow ochre. Now I'm just adding a little bit of these colors first to mix them in, just, just to see what I have. I wanted to get kind of a, a warm green, but also a dark green. Um, once I get these mixed up, then we'll keep adding in different colors until I get it the way I want it. That looks really nice. I like that. It's a good mix of that kind of warm, you know, kind of leafy green and the darkest deciduous green, a good mix between the two. Now that I have my color mixed, I'm gonna go ahead and put some of this into a second cup and add in some more water to thin it out, make it more of a stain. I got the kind of the hang of it and the feel of this. I want to talk a little bit about it. So as I'm painting this in, um, where it sits and is thick and is wet, it's more opaque. So as I work across, I'll kind of you know paint an area and then I'll drag out the paint so that way it's thinner. Whoop. And watch those drips. The nice thing about this though is that it's all organic. So if I do a drip like I did earlier, I just kind of incorporate that into one of the trees as long as it's not in a really horrible place, but you know. But I just try to be careful, follow my lines that I drew, but also, you know, just keep the lines organic. Try not to get too static and too like rigid with it and keep your keep your brush moving. It'll just make everything look that much more natural. But yeah, just make sure you're pulling away, thinning out these areas of paint so that way they're not sitting and drying too thick. So that way they stay nice and, uh, you know, semi-transparent. Do a couple little Happy little trees here and there. Make everybody happy. All right, there we go. It looks really good. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. You can see I went back over it a couple times, made sure I got the right nice darkness where I wanted, and also kind of changed up the way I did some of the, you know, pine trees, the coniferous trees, a little different than some of the deciduous trees. So it turned out really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and now I'm gonna mark off my two spots where I'm gonna put holes to mount this to the wall. I'm just doing a little uh, test piece with the boiled linseed oil over the paint. I just want to make sure it wouldn't kind of reactivate that acrylic paint and, uh, and you know, move it around some, but it looks like it's doing really good. So we're going to go ahead and oil the entire thing down now with boiled linseed oil.
that's looking really nice. I'm really happy with that. And I'm gonna wipe off the rest of this oil and then we'll go ahead and mount on the hooks to it. My last two hooks, the one, the second hook and the fourth hook, are actually 16 inches apart exactly. So again, those are the ones that I'm gonna be putting longer screws through. That'll go all the way through the coat rack and screw directly into the studs on the wall. All right, guys, well, this turned out really nice. I'm super excited to be able to get this upstairs into my bedroom and hang up my jackets and get everything organized. I love the way these hooks turned out. Um, they have this really great kind of dappled black and silver pattern to them, which just looks really nice and just adds another element to this. And the, the pattern of the trees against it and the wood, everything oiled up, just these colors are gorgeous. I'm really excited to have this all finished. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's been a really fun project. A quick couple days, but just something that I think will really, you know, I'll be able to keep and cherish for a long time. Uh, make sure you like the video if you haven't already and hit that subscribe button. Uh, check us out on Instagram and also over on Patreon, and we'll see you guys on the next video.